years, and uh, I cut meat for a living, and I just bought my, myself some new uh, knives from Amazon. These guys are Victory Knox knives. I've been using this brand now for about 14 years, so long I've been cutting, and um, decided my knives were getting too dull and they weren't really holding an edge, so I decided to get some new knives. Let me tell you about them. So hopefully you guys can hear me okay with, with this fan in the background. Um, so, these were my, uh, my old knives here, and uh, this guy right here is uh, worn down a little bit farther than I want it. It's got a little bit more life in there, but I want to get a new knife, so. This guy here, um, a lot of, um, you probably shouldn't be using the wood handles because they harbor a lot of bacteria in the wood. Uh, you, you want more of like a plastic handle if you're renew to knife cutting or if you're renew to meat cutting. Um, so I kind of want to upgrade. This would be my home knife. And uh, these bad boys are the new Victor Knox knives that I just ordered. And I like these because uh, they're more of like a uh, square grip. So a lot, a lot easier to, to handle when you're working the meat. Um, as opposed to this uh, unnamed brand here. It just got kind of more of a, uh, a round handle on there, so it's a little bit slick. I don't like using this one too much. Um, also, it's, I don't know, I just don't really like, I've been using Victory Knox for so many years. This is what I know, this is what I'm gonna stick with. Um, so this is what I recommend if you guys are interested in, uh, in getting these. So um, let's go cut a little bit of meat and I'll show you guys how they work. Of course, they're right from the factory, so they're gonna be razor sharp. Today we are going to be cutting a cross rib roast into uh, what we call beef country style ribs. So uh, let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna be cutting a boneless cross rib roast. It comes from the uh, upper shoulder of the cow. And uh, we cut these into uh, steaks or country style ribs here at the market. So uh, let's get into it. This is kind of a complicated cut of meat for somebody who, who's never cut before. It's not as straightforward as, say, like a chuck roast or something. So on this piece, uh, what you want to start first is um, there's a little flat piece here. I'm going to trim this fat off. You want to try not to... Every cut of meat, you, uh, every piece of meat you cut, you want to try to take off as little meat as possible. Because that means profit. So just uh, when you peel this back, you just kind of want to just follow this uh, bone skin down. You can see there's a seam there, so I like to just peel it back, cut along that seam, keep peeling. Uh, cube steaks or stew meat. Take a little bit more of that fat off. It's like 95 degrees. It's going to be today, so probably not any stew meat. So I use that for cube steaks. Next, you want to uh, trim off all this fat and silver skin up here. How are you guys liking this camera angle? Is that pretty good? Uh, I know the last one when I was cutting that beef rib uh, wasn't the best, so I'm just trying to work with the, uh, the angles a little bit more. All right, so got that top part cleaned up. Now right here, um, normally what you'd have, well, not normally, every cow has it, is a, what they call flat iron. It's a big old piece of meat that comes out about, about this far and uh, sometimes they take it off 
and other times, uh, you know, they'll, they'll have this piece off and they'll call this the, uh, the clawed heart. Uh, we just uh, happen to get it this way this time. So what you're going to have is some bristle that runs down here that separates the flat iron from uh, the cross rib. So you want to come in here, find that bristle seam, cut that off. Doesn't that be too perfect? That looks okay to me. And there's a little seam that divides this piece from this piece. So you want to kind of come down and find that seam. Ride that uh, membrane down, cut it, and then you have your uh, another piece of meat for like stew or cute material. And then just kind of clean it up a little bit, don't take too much meat off. There we go, that looks pretty good to me I think. And now you just kind of want to trim the fat a little bit on the back. Hopefully I'm not going too fast for you guys. Alright, so that looks pretty good. So then what you want to do is, you see the grain kind of going this, this direction. You want to cut against that, square this piece up here. It's more material for like stew meat or whatnot. And then uh, cut this into uh, good one and a half inch pieces. And this goes for steaks too, if you're going to do steaks out of this piece. Um, you just want to cut them, well, preference really, a lot of people just do like an inch, but we're doing country style so we want to make these thicker. So cut that about an inch, inch and a half or so, or like inch and three quarter. All the way down. So, this piece here, I could probably get one out of it. Square this piece up. Got one right there. This piece, cut it in half. You got two more. Probably you could take this crystal off there. Alright. Just keep cutting these guys in half to get these little strips. That's what we call country style ribs here in Southern Oregon. It might be called something different where you live. It's funny the different names of uh, the same kind of cuts throughout the states. Right there, and then that first piece, you can even use that for a country style rib. You just kind of square it up. Make sure all the pieces are nice and uh, Nice and squared here, just cut it right in half, turn it over, and you got two more country styles there. Alright guys, so I gotta get back to work. Uh, if you liked the video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. If you have any uh, recommendations on something that you want to see me cut on the next video, put it in the comments down below. And uh, you guys take care and I'll see you in the next video.